Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Galactic History Show. It's the second show for the week this week. And I can hear the birds outside because the sun is just coming up. So good morning to wherever you are, or good evening, good afternoon, to the people in the chat, to the people who are listening to this afterwards. We're all particip participating in the same moment of now. Now with me, with me today is Nikki Fetzi. Uh, Andrew is actually taking the show off today. He's been churning his way through the uh, incredible backlog of readings that he's had since we started these shows a couple of months back. He's within striking range of finishing the, um, the readings in about four or five days. Uh, he's doing sessions of three, four, five, six people per, at a time and uh, last couple of days he's actually worn his voice out and he's got a session to do in a couple of hours. So we've given him a couple of, a couple of hours off and Nikki and I are going to press on with the instruction manual for the human body that you never got at birth. So good morning, Nikki. Good morning, Chris. Aloha. Aloha <laughs> to you. You've been having some exciting adventures in Hawaii. We had a little chat about yes. that yesterday. Yes, we did. Swimming with turtles in some pretty rough surf. Yes, I actually did triple somersault under the water <laughs> unintentionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We uh, uh, surf. The surf swimming is very popular down here in Australia, and uh, mm -hmm. there are some pretty wild beaches. Uh, and some of the time, you end up in a situation which I used to call the washing machine, where you're actually getting tossed around like you were a handkerchief, uh, particularly on uh, on beaches with a short, sharp wave action, you can end up, uh, let's shall we just say, getting pounded on the sand and tossed around. It's quite an experience. In fact, probably the one, one of the most, um, one of the ones I remember most is actually being uh, hit in my, hit in the head with my own knee. That hurt, as I recall. <laughs> However, welcome to the show. It's good Thank that you. you're actually, actually on vacation with Andrew because it means we can, uh, quickly reorganize things uh, before the show if uh, if there's some issue like there is with Andrew today mm -hmm. yeah so it's really funny we you know they can the Wi-Fi connections been really good since we moved into this new location and you know Andrew's been on the radio and we never had problems until you put me and him together and then there goes the Wi-Fi indeed Indeed, indeed. They really don't want you two on the air together. Divine feminine and divine, ma divine masculine is something that they, um, they especially seem to be worried about. And rightly so, because we're putting out a huge amount of information about how, the, particularly at the moment, about how the human body actually works. And this has been lost to the collective for so long uh, that it's... It's probably having, you know, it's probably having that ripple effect as people hear the information and realise that, you know, there are there are things that they just have never known about their bodies and about the relationships we're supposed to have, particularly between male and female. That that is correct, and we've been cheated, hijacked in so many ways and shape and form, so that we are not connected with our inner body. Hmm. Because the key, the key to um, activation, the key for to ascension, um, and also intuitive development is to be connected with oneself. Hmm. Yep. I just got a note from KP that uh, Quilla Pele that he's actually um, he's actually waiting for his cosmic radiance vehicle, uh, that is a Honda CRV, mm -hmm. to be serviced. So he's uh, he's probably available to have a bit of a chat. Oh, wonderful! That that should be fun. I think today will be maybe a hodgepodge of just everything, and we can also take calls. Well, if that's, that's okay it. with you. That is that it will. That's fine by me. We can take uh, a couple of calls for sure. Okay. Um, I'll just send KP a bit of a message there just so he knows that we will call him back. Very good. Look, before we do, we'll do a couple of announcements. Andrew's videos that he produced at, at Mount Shasta 
with Lance White a couple of months back and now being put on the internet on a channel called Creating 5D. There uh, is somewhere around... Well, let me check. I shall check. There was a, Last night there was 12. I think there's around 15 now. They're about 25 minutes apiece. They, they are running through... Um, Essentially, the, the detail of the information is, follows a similar overall pattern to the first three shows that we did on walking in energy. And um, with Lance, however, they're going into a bit more detail and really enjoying them at this stage. Yeah, looking like there's actually 12 up at the moment, which is great. Uh, they're already... The views are starting to crank up slightly. And as people find out about them, no doubt they'll, uh, no doubt they'll pop up even more. So drop into those and have a listen. There's lots of little little snippets here and there that that we haven't covered off yet because every time you talk to Andrew, of course, you get you get different layers of information coming through. So have a look at those. The um, later this month, Nikki and I are actually doing a couple of seminars. Uh, webinars, let's call them webinars, and we settle on the dates of the 21st and the 28th of September. Uh, the timing is going to be uh, PST time, about 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., but that's not fixed in stone yet, but the dates we're pretty sure are going to work, so we're putting them out there. And there's two seminars. Nikki, do you want to talk about them? Yes, we set it on the September 21st and the 28th and we um, I would like to propose of uh, discussing um, discussing uh, in terms of uh, how to use sacred geometry what they are and also finding out all the ley lines and also um, feng shui the um, the buildings how the engineers are working on a, on a higher level to Hello? Hello? You're on still, Nikki. It's all good. Oh, okay. I could not hear you. <laughs> no, I, I just I just muted so I could type a message into the chat. Didn't want the type oh, okay. to come through. And uh, so we wanted to find the ley lines and figure out how we can um, uh, go into building structures that they built on ley lines to harvest the energy Okay, because the ley line produces, um, generates energy. And as the energy comes out, one can use the building structure to harvest that. So we want to figure out where they're located and then to um, either, you know, basically cut off that supply. Okay, and uh, we can use cones uh, to, re to basically harness that energy and convert it and then redirect it to a higher purpose. So that's something I think would be a lot of fun for our listeners to do. And because from our last week conversation, we, you know, we had that really amazing caller, I think it was Elizabeth, that had called in and uh, brought the, up this topic. And it's one of the topics that I wanted to, uh, you know, um, have a lot of people involved because we're at that point where we need to regroup ourselves and taking proactive um, in contributing um, how we can dismantle the energy grid work. Yes, and it's very simple. You, you really don't have to know a lot. And, you know, you can use simple tools like Pendulum or the L-Rod, and that is something that I provide as well. And, um, you know, you can take that and you walk around and just find the energy line. And a lot of times, if you don't notice, buildings that you're in, are used to um, to um, create energy, okay? Yeah, the um, the seminars are actually going to be extremely useful for particularly for light workers, particularly those who already do grid work or energy work. They should be able to pick up this technique and actually use it immediately and the the only thing I really need to do is identify which buildings are being used in this fashion and when we talked about this Nikki you talked about it being like flicking off a switch for them like turning the lights out 
and that, that's right. that is really going to upset their, their yes. technology a big time. Right. And what I like about this, Chris, is that this is my easy button. <laughs> you know, yeah. I like everything. Easy button, short and sweet and powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's like going, going straight for, you know, the jugular vein on your neck where you cut that off and cut off all the blood supply to the heart and automatically it's shut off and dead. Okay. But it's the safest way and there's nothing to clean up after and it's the most cost effective <laughs> yeah. way. Right, because, I mean, if you look at it, there are those that go out there and burn up buildings, okay? They go and cause, like, physical harm, and that's not what we want to do. No, we don't want to cause not at all. any physical harm to building structure, to Mother Earth. Yes, any time you go and blow up things up, it will cause physical harm, has an effect on the Mother Earth and the people that are in that area. Well, not only that. So people don't want that. You know, the cities, the, what Nick is talking about are major buildings, in, particularly in the central business districts of large cities, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to churches and, and monasteries, things that, things that are directly related to religion are particularly used for this, and dotted all over the planet are these, are these uh, mechanisms that they're using to harvest, harvest energy from us. Mm -hmm. Now, we paid for all that infrastructure, they're nice shiny That's buildings. Right. We, you know, we mm -hmm. don't want to. We don't want to do anything to them. We just want to reclaim their usage, repurpose That's them. Right. You know, which is the theme of one of the other shows we're working on, is is repurposing the existing uh, infrastructures and resources that we have to what That's the people right. to what the people really need. And that's this is just another aspect of it. And yes. particularly at the energetic level, which which certainly you know, uh, up until I started working with the. Um, particularly with Peter and Michael um, from Avatar, Avatar Energy Institute, become painfully aware that, that everything is operating at an energetic level first and foremost. So that's what they're doing. So let's flick those switches, turn it off, make those energy, energy sources go dark for them. That would be that's right. that would be tremendous, and it will help the cause because if you know the the whole domination and control system is being held in place by multidimensional beings who are harvesting energy. That's the, right. The more we can chop that off, the quicker we'll resolve this. That's correct. And like I said, this is my easy button. Anybody can participate. Okay, and it's mm -hmm. simple. Mm -hmm. And you know, and and because I know that. Um, Many people are concerned, okay, how do I do this? Do I need to go and take classes? You know, and yeah, some people do and participate in the avatar school or one of those Harry Potter schools that teach you these things. But it's not as hard as you think. You know, there are ley lines everywhere. We're not going to destroy any of those ley lines. We're just converting, transforming the energy. That's all we're doing. Okay. Excellent. And and figure out where and who is trying to harvest this energy. Because we know that they harvest this energy, but the energy is pure and clean, okay? It's just that when they take it, they use that for darker purpose. And that's what we want to cut off their blood supplies. Excellent. Now, the second seminar is on a completely different subject. Yes. Which is? Oh, and I do <laughs> want to tell you that uh, I, I wanted to bring uh, some of the uh, Archangels Michael and the uh, Guan Yin uh, Sisterhood Energies to come in uh, to participate in the uh, teleseminar as well because some of these people are already working the grid and they're very, Chris, I can't enough tell you how much, they're very tuned in into my energy. And these people I don't even know of. And, and all the experiences that I've gone through, they indicated, okay, word by word, exactly describe uh, some of the things that I have experienced and seen and or create. And so I'm, I'm really excited to bring um, that uh, some of these people on air and share with us what are some of the things that they have been doing. And it's funny how where we are at because, you know, there's a reason and purpose why we're located where we're located. In, you mean at the moment in Hawaii? You're at speaking the of? moment. Well, yeah. not just here, but also some of the people where they're living. Um, for example, one, one of my um, associates, um, she's living in the heart of the Rothschild-like quarters, 
<laughs> oh, right. Okay. In UK. So, so you she's know in the city of is. London somewhere. Yeah, that's correct. So that is the heart of it. And it's not a good energy place. So she goes and dismantles some of the energies already. But we wanted to jack up the energy and use the cones to dismantle those energies and reconvert it into a higher purpose. So it's very exciting. I'm, I'm very excited to go over this, and you know, we'll, we'll have we'll use Google satellite map and figure out different locations. You know, we'll discuss um, the White House and the Pentagon. I mean, look at the Pentagon. What shape is that? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> could could they be any more obvious? And even here, the um, uh, the capital city of Canberra is a sacred geometry city. And it's mm -hmm. specifically on one of the biggest energy points in the whole planet. You know, they supposedly had a competition to find the location. Well, you know, there was only ever going to be one location. And that's where it is right now. So, you know, in this country, we've got a job of, uh, of disconnecting Canberra, the capital city, from this energy harvesting system. So everybody has their work cut out for them, Nikki. Yes. Yeah. Now, the second seminar was going to be for... Um, for indigo parenting children. indigo children. Yes. Indigo children, crystal children, uh, autistic, and that's one of um, Andrew's uh, favorite uh, topic to talk about. Uh, children are very close to my heart, and they are very, very special. So we, we definitely wanted to discuss that, and um, I work with children myself, and I have 15 nieces and nephews, so I, I have worked with them since they were born. Born. Mm. and um, oh yes and uh, so we'll discuss more about that how do we parent them how do we um, give love to them um, on the emotional mental spiritual and the physical level as well very very important that we define all those four aspects excellent okay well that'll be uh, advertised through the sovereignmedia.net website and uh, I'll probably be, well, certainly through our respective Facebook pages, which um, and I must thank people who are, who are putting comments on my Facebook pages. Um, it's really, really nice to get good, the, the great feedback that we're getting on the shows, etc. It's, uh, you know, makes, uh, I've been somewhat disconnected from that aspect of the alternative media, but um, it is good to get the feedback that we're actually getting and encourages us to keep doing the work you know as as much as possible i have to also say that it's it's taking me a little time to fit it into my schedule to actually work on the the stuff i'm getting through email and through facebook uh, gradually getting to know the um, the facebook interface etc so that volume will increase as we go i don't think i'm being um, shy and retiring uh, Got quite a few things on at the moment. Even just organising this stuff with Nikki takes a certain amount of conversation and time just to sort out the days we're going to do it on, doesn't it, Nikki? Yes, yes, it does require extra time off air where we sit and discuss, you know, uh, and getting organised. And uh, I think that uh, sometimes it's very hard for light workers to do is to sit down and getting organised in our thoughts and um, what we want to verbalise. And uh, because there's so much things to say, you know, and everyone have, uh, has his whole own life that we have to manage, you know, in, in addition to this, uh, the radio show that involves the entire galactic, <laughs> the mm. whole universe, and h considering how many beings and humans that are listening. Yeah, I just saw a note in the chat room here saying um, that we need secretaries. Well, well yes, we actually do. I am getting some help, though. I've got Renee, who's who's jumped up and has been helping me with the Facebook page. And big thanks to Renee uh, and and a few other people um, here and there. So we do get some assistance. It's uh, Renee is actually in the same town as me, so we're on the same same time zone, which makes a huge difference, Nikki, because the yes. I know Andre in in Adelaide uh, assists Andrew and yourself with uh, some of your activities and scheduling and so forth but you know you're all in different time zones so there's this constant um, well constant need to actually make sure that you're ahead of the game so that the time zone doesn't cause a, a, a slip in information flow and 
upset the apple cart at the wrong moment. So, well, that all very interesting. And also, um, the time zone, you know, it's um, it can also really take away your sleep, your rest time, and also oh, yeah. your your functioning life. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got a Facebook campaign going on at the moment, which I do need to mention. And uh, in fact, I, I might bring KP in if he's here because I, I I wanted him to be aware of this because we do actually need to get information out about it when it's ready to rock and roll. It's going to be a short, sharp campaign, and it's very specific, and it's very important, and it's it's all about um, focusing people's attention on the mainstream media issue. For a very for a very specific newspaper here in Australia, who's actually put out a major one full page ad about be about a week and a half ago at this stage, claiming that they are completely free of corporate influence and and have integrity and will print the truth, and we took that as a great big red flag of as come and talk to us. Uh, we want to find out what's on your mind. That's what we're going to be doing. The Facebook page is uh, something that's been keeping me up late, which is one of the reasons why I'm very short of sleep at the moment. There's a group of five or six of us who are working on putting this out. It's um, going to be very specifically asking people to answer some questions and put in a comment. We'd like to get tens of thousands, if, if not over a you know, hundred thousand plus people commenting on this because the comments are all going to end up in the lap of the editor at the age. And we're essentially focusing the whole thing on this newspaper publishing information about the financial industry and the fraud that's gone in uh, gone on for decades and as a, as a secondary but closely related issue, the fact that many, many governments on this planet are corporations and they're hiding it. They do not want us to know that. So we're putting it back onto the newspapers that it's time for some truth. That again, is a, that's just another, another thing that's going on on the side. Got a, a great team of people working on us, on, with us on that. It's probably 24, 48 hours from going live at this stage. It's being handled by someone who's got great experience in Facebook and can really put out some um, complex Facebook pages. So one of the aspects of it is that um, we are intending to have comments emailed directly to the uh, the information email address at the Age newspaper. So as you as you hit the button and answer questions, they'll be getting an email from you. And we want them to get many, many thousands of emails pouring into that line there with people saying, this is the truth that we want. Um, it also gives us an opportunity to leverage other newspapers because we can go to other newspapers and say, hey, uh, these guys are doing the right thing. How about you? And interestingly enough, Andrew's been saying for some time that newspapers were the key to cracking the media. And, and when this ad popped up, we all went, whoa something going on here. Never seen anything like this before. Um, I've, I've read out the, uh, the actual ad on other uh, shows, so I won't necessarily put it out here. It will be up on the Facebook page, and it's just a few paragraphs, but it's very specific. They put themselves right out on a limb and said, here, <coughs> pull this great big lever. So if everyone could keep an eye out for that, we need it to go absolutely viral when it hits. We need it to just be absolutely swamped because uh, we really want them to know actually two things. First of all, that we heard the message and that we're telling them what we want. And secondly, that we've got their back because they are going to get um, a lot of pressure from you-know-who when this, when this goes viral. So uh, they have to know that we're actually going to support them in that. So that's my, my little message rant for today, Nikki. Have you got any other news you want to put forth? Uh, yes, I actually had to push my um, my Lotus Healing Service a week later after I returned to uh, San Diego, and um, that's because I, you know, I schedule it where I needed to uh, get caught up to manufacture the uh, the Tinano products, and uh, because we have so such a high demand, and I can't, I don't have enough supplies right now to make them. 
Um, so I'm still waiting, as a matter of fact, for the shipment to be um, uh, to come. And so as soon as I get back to the state, that's one thing that I wanted to focus on is to be able to uh, finish making all the products and send them off in the order that I have received. So um, I wanted the, our listener to be aware of that. And when you purchase the team nano, there is no um, where I set up Skype and have a direct contact with the, um, the buyers. And all I do is, and all I need is basically just look at your name and I can literally tune into your energy field and then tell you if, um, you know, what kind of disc or pendants or cones that, you, that are made just right for you. Because even if they are the same product, okay, it's not quite the same. So, like I said, tune into your energy field and I can tell you what are your needs. And if there's any questions about um, in terms of the things that you pick and it's not right for you, I will contact you directly. So I wanted to let out a listen to know that. And, um, you know, it's not, I'm not sending out, I'm not doing my work. It's just right now I'm waiting for supplies to come in from Korea so I can't do anything about it. So, um, but uh, definitely I think the earliest um, products that will be finished and shipped off will be maybe first week the first week of October, and I definitely wanted to um, finish all of that, be hopefully before I um, I go anywhere else. <laughs> so that's my priority. I wanted to let our listener know that that uh, you guys are on my uh, my mind and my heart, and I know that um, you need those products. I just don't have enough right now to ship to anyone. And um, Chris, how are you feeling? with your T-Nano technologies that you have? Uh, very good, actually. Very good. The pendant, I actually, um, when, I, when I actually received it, I actually put it in my pocket and uh, actually took the dog for a walk. And within a couple of minutes, I could actually, actually feel an effect. Now, for me, and it'll probably be different for everybody, there's a certain effect I get in my feeling I get in my chest when, um, and the best way to describe this is vibrationally, when, when, when the vibrational level goes up. Now, I'm, I'm familiar with this because, um, folks, if you get on a call with Nikki and Andrew, uh, you're kind of getting blasted with energy, whether you realize it or not. And uh, if you speak to them for a little while and, and then sort of hang up and walk away, you realize that uh, you know, you're, act you're actually quite... The best word is buzzing. Now, the, the effect of the pendant is the same, but it's at, a, it's at a, a lower but very consistent level. It's there all the time. And uh, it, it actually really does... Uh, have an effect. It stirs up one's bodily energies quite noticeably. So I'm really enjoying that. And the cone, the cone seems to be a bit different. No, it's not a cone actually. You call it the discs, don't you, Nikki? It's sort of a, it's yeah, actually, it's, it's a truncated cone. In fact. Yes, it is. It is. And you're correct about that. And uh, but I call it disc because it kind of looks like uh, a hockey puck disc. Yes, it is. And uh, it is different energy from the cone itself. Okay, the cone is much more powerful. Mm. And, and, different to, and different to the pendant? Yes. Size matters. <laughs> yes. Now, what and I've been doing with... Go ahead, talk. Yep, go ahead. And the, the pendant is much smaller, Chris, and um, most of the time you want to wear it where um, it lands on your uh, uh, chest, the middle of your chest. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling sick, okay, um, like a cold coming or you're weak and tired, you, what you do is you, you um, erase up the pendant where you place. So you want to go, like I would say, right below, an inch below your clavicle, okay? Uh -huh. That's where you want to place them. And it will actually help increase your immune system. It will increase your immune system, and you literally can get over a cold. I went to the Glendale um, event with the Project Camelot when I did a work there. And there's this gentleman, he came to my desk and to my table, and he's like, oh, I don't believe this, you know, and uh, he was having really bad cold. And I said, okay, why don't you sit and have a free healing? And that's all I did. I gave him my disc, and I said, put it right there, okay, an inch below your clavicle, 
and um, and he sat there for about five ten minutes, and his call was gone. Mm. Now that was the disc or the pendant. He used the disc. The disc and, and the which, disc is better than it, it's bigger than the pendant, so it works faster. <laughs> with the with the disc, obviously it's a truncated cone, so one of the surfaces is slightly smaller than the other. Is there more energy emanating out of one side, or is it e equal from both both of the flat surfaces? Okay, the disc um, it, and the disc and the pendant, okay, the whole similar structure. And it will have the top and the bottom, okay? The mm -hmm. bottom is more wider, and that is where you see the, um, the local image that looks like an elephant, mm -hmm. okay? And, and um, that is the bottom. The top part is, has the shape of a uh, seed of light, not cloud of light, seed of light, okay? Mm -hmm. So you wanted to place the uh, image of elephant looking, on your hmm we may have lost you Nikki chest touching your skin that part is actually it sends the energy to you uh oh hello hello no you're here hello? it's okay we just a, we had a big delay just for a moment there we, we I think we heard everything okay so can you hear me now yes yes we're good okay Good. Okay, so there's more energy, okay. more energy coming through the symbol of the elephant. That's right. So if you need energy field, okay, if you need more energy to you, then you place the uh, elephant shape against your skin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in in a situation where let's say you're dealing with a broken heart, traumatized, okay, mm -hmm. and your chest is so full of energy over time because you had broken heart and traumatized that you kept it to a point where you can't breathe. And a lot of people can relate to this because that's what you call holding a lot of stuff in your closet and needs to come out, whatever that may be, okay, including, you know, broken heart relationship, trauma, and um, it's so full that it's ready to explode, just like a balloon, okay, when you put too much uh, air in the balloon, it will eventually explode. So there's two ways you can treat this, okay? One, you can push in energy and allow the balloons to explode, and then the energy will dissipate, okay? Mm -hmm. When it dissipates, you'll have little chunks, okay? Um, like a, um, it will, will kind of scatter around your chest area. Another way you can do it, then, of course, you have to go and individually remove, physically remove those spots like a glob, Okay, of uh, maybe dark energies, globs that you have to go pull it out. The other method is to pull it out. So instead of allowing the balloon full of air to explode, you just go and, and uh, release it. Okay, just go and mm -hmm. release it where the opening of the balloon is. So what you do is you take the disc and you, f you flip it over and you use the, um, the seed of life image on the, on the top. Okay, and you place that against the skin, it'll suck it out. It'll suck it out. Mm -hmm. You won't feel the the explosion. Okay. Mm. Okay. So Good. once you remove those energies, okay, you can literally flip the disc over and then replace it with high frequency energy. And this is where a lot of times people when people that are doing healing, they go and remove stuff out. Okay, it's like saying, um, you know, like a piggy bank. You know, mm -hmm. a piggy bank, you need to refill it. Whatever you take out, you have to fill it in with newer, cleaner, high-frequency energy. Excellent. So it actually has the disc, uh, both the disc. Otherwise, the body will go back and search. Yeah, yes. all of all of these objects that you create, they, they have uh, an energy that's being directed out the top and it's being pulled in through the bottom. Yes. Okay, yes. and you can so, actually use uh, that to advantage is what you're saying. Yes, definitely. It's just a Excellent. matter of um, um, preference as well. You know, and, and if, you, if you were to use the, um, the elephant-looking logo against your skin, okay, in, on your fir first, second, and third um, chakras, 
okay? You literally can have an erection for a male, okay? okay. And, and uh, yes, you can. And also an orgasm as well for both men and women. Interesting. And I presume with the cones, that's uh, more accentuated. Yes. The, the, the hard part with the cone is that you have to have, somebody has to hold it for you. Oh, you have to hold it so you can't completely relax unless yep. you, you know, use a lot of pillows and set it up <laughs> in some way. And I even consider a building a kind of a, a platform rod where you can um, turn the cones upside down, okay, mm -hmm. and shoot the energy directly to all of your seven chakras. That would be the most amazing, okay, just kind of like John of God when you have the crystal um, healing, mm -hmm. okay. That's how it is set up. So my cones, if you, if you, if both of you who are interested, you can get seven of the cones and align it with your seven chakra, and you lay down on a bed or healing table, and to receive that, that is really amazing. If not, you can literally put seven of them underneath your, let's say, um, healing table. Okay, you can also do that. It's very powerful. Mm. Super powerful. Now, what about doing things like um, uh, Andrew suggested putting salt on uh, on the back of in a in a Ziploc bag on the back of your neck, uh, or salt on the coccyx mm -hmm. down on the base of the spine, uh, uh, placing things like the disc directly on those areas, pointed inward, mm -hmm. so that the, you're 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 actually pointing the energy field into your body, what sort of effect will that have? Well, when you use salt, salt, its purpose is, is to neutralize things. Mm -hmm. okay? It's just neutralize. Okay? When you use the, um, the T-Nano technology, it cleans it out. It's just like air filter. Mm -hmm. We call it the Qi filter. It cleans it out, and then it gives you the high-frequency replacement. Okay? Our body is made of energy. If somebody comes in and remove those energy, whether it's good or bad, it doesn't matter. The thing is, your your body is like a box. It has to be filled up with energy. If it doesn't, it, then you go out and you're looking to sponge to be a sponge and absorb. Whether it's good or bad, most people are not even aware, so they go and absorb them. So guess what? Now your body is full of, let's say, negative energy frequency when you're not aware. That's why the T-Nano product comes in. It comes in because it allows you to filter out your chi and then replace it with a high frequency. So mm. now you become happy because your, your energy feels full. Yeah, well, it's, I've certainly noticed a um, more consistency of uh, mood, I suppose you could say, wearing the actual... Yes. Wearing the actual uh, the cone, mm -hmm. uh, not the cone. I wouldn't yeah, wear a cone. Wearing, really wearing the uh, the pendant. Pendant, yeah. It, and you want you want consistency, okay? You don't want to be like a yo-yo energy person up and down, and it translates and then becomes into your human emotional uh, field. Then you have a good day, bad day, and you're like up and down. We don't want that. That is not good for the psyche, mm. okay? On your emotional and mental. And it affects your spiritual and your physical level because it will affect you at the cellular level because the cell has to produce endocrine um, and making new cells and blood and, you know, name it, all sorts of um, biochem to sustain your physical well-being. That's why you want to have consistency. That's called being in harmony, not balance. It's about being in harmony. Balance is like standing in the middle of the gushing river and you're standing against it that's mm -hmm. balancing mm. your body very good and the last last point i wanted to actually when ask you're in you harmony, about you go with the flow of the river yeah mm -hmm. the last thing i wanted to ask you about with the disc was that um larry bazell suggested actually sleeping with it under the pillow which i found very interesting and i have i have done that now we had a seminar with Teal, Teal Scott and Andrew a couple of weeks back and one of the subjects that came up was the fact that when Teal and Andrew have had contact with, with pretty much anybody that they start working with them in dream time. Well, a couple of mornings I have um, woken up when I've used the, the disc, I've actually woken up and I'm, what I'm hearing is Teal Scott's voice. Right? That's never happened before. 
not, not certainly not from teal, but um, I have had I have had that experience when I have very short, quick naps during the day, but never when I wake up in the morning. So the current, the the disc is actually definitely having an effect there on on dreaming. I'm under the impression that I am doing a lot more uh, intense dreaming when I do this with the disc under the pillow. So is that the experience you'd expect? Yes. Definitely. And the experience is different for everyone. Okay? It depends on your spiritual journey and uh, what you choose to do. And uh, some go in and deal with their karma. And some, you know, can see the future. So it just depends on the level where you're at and the lessons that you need to uh, learn or resolve. And for you, you know, you're working with Teal Scott. <laughs> Mm. And yeah, that's amazing. Well, and you and I want to tell you, it's apparently. not just a dream. You literally, you guys were connected on a different dimension, working mm. together. Mm. Okay, yes. this is real. I don't. And you will eventually, Chris, um, start seeing when the more you wear the product, your dream feels going to exist in your life, where it happened like in front of you, and you're going to participate in that, participate in the dream time. So what it means that there is no sub between dream time and reality it becomes one mm, well that's that's the state that Andrew's been talking about continuously yes. and that's yes and that's what I call being in the quantum field because mm. now you're literally manifesting every second with a blink of an eye you can literally manifest things for it to happen mm. okay when Pretty you exciting lower stuff. your frequency it won't happen you have to be in that high frequency that's why my technology provide that easy button for people to get in the field faster okay and then um and nikki's getting excited she's starting to miss up uh, her own it think... also promote you to uh i would say more <laughs> Is, is the connection going bad? Yeah, <laughs> look, when you, know yeah, when you get intense, when, the when, you, yeah, when you get intense, Nikki, the uh, the signal sometimes fades out, so and you just kind of kicked into that mode there because uh, look, it is very it is very noticeable the effect it's having, and and what I'm noticing is that it doesn't necessarily stop when I take the um, the pendant off, and that's what we're after. That's it's, exactly. it's staying it's staying at that right. higher level. So uh, really, well, and really enjoying also, it. Chris, Chris you know, um, e eventually, you know, you're not going to be depending on any of those technology. Eventually, because see, right now, it's converting uh, and sustaining you, okay, mm. on a high frequency. And then as life happens, you know, consciously, right, it tends to bring us down. Bad things happen, it bring us energy field down. But with this, it helps you sustain that. It's like a cushion. And it's wonderful because let's, let's face it. Life happens, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To to all of us, to the best of us, and we're human, so we're allowed to have some negative thinking and actions. Then, but the thing is, we, without a T nano, you can actually falter into that negative feel. But with it, it allows you to sustain. So you can only go up. You can only go up, and eventually, when you reach that certain enlightenment. You won't need it anymore. Mm. The T nano, you will not be dependent on it because your energy field has already reached up there at a high level. Great stuff. And what what's happening, folks, is that I'm um, I'm going to be having uh, Nikki make me a couple of cones, and we'll do the on air tune. We'll do the tune up <laughs> on air. That'll be fun. And as you can tell by the little chuckle in the background, KP has joined us as well. So we'll finish the discussion of the, uh, cool. the Tanano stuff there and say hello, KP. Wow. Hello. Aloha. Hi, I KP. Aloha. Yeah, I, I forgot I had muted, but uh, I, I can tell you that I came in. The first word I heard was yo-yo. So that's probably <laughs> significant right there. <laughs> and I, uh, I just, you're speaking about cones. And I just had uh, I just had an ice cream cone, um, so it seems like we're connected that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also had a uh, you know I'm just sitting I have, kind of have a spot here where where I am right now that I like to come and talk. It's a little bit quieter, and uh, so I sat down and I turned over this oh little candy wrapper that was uh, I, I just didn't even know it was a candy wrapper. I just turned it over. 
And the candy, or whatever it was, is called Hawaiian Host. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and uh, here you are talking to a Hawaiian host. Well, so, uh, and by the way, I, the other word that resonated here was, was the word disc. And um, I actually have a disc that travels with me all the time. In fact, I left it in my vehicle that was, it was given to me by, um, by G over on, uh, in Kona. And, uh, but it's a, I, I don't know exactly what you call it. It's a scalar disc or a, it's just a small, like a pendant you can wear if you want to. But my car said that it wanted to have this uh, all the time with it. And uh, so I, I look at that as an extra um, piece of alignment that, you know, it's part of the car alignment. And, uh, and, and as you were speaking about karma, also, you, the, the, the connection there was that, well, I was just in uh, a local uh, 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 auto shop here getting my car uh, worked on. So they're like the mothers of my car. So karma, uh, that, that's, that's <laughs> the, karma, yes. the, the joke for the day. <laughs> uh, uh, boom, boom. Karma. I, I yeah. just uh, if I uh, I just wanted to 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 share too one thing that um, the communication via dreams. Now I I really on on Tuesday when I uh, came on the show I, I really and Andrew asked me about well what about your dreams and I really hadn't remembered them uh, except that you know at one point I was after I woke up got a very long sleep but I felt very much uh, drained like my energy or you know not drained but really just like oh I've been doing a lot during the dream time and uh, one of the things that happened last night was uh, there was a dream that was very clear to me uh, that was that had to do with it was it was like something some people who are there in Hawaii and involved in, it looked like there was inv involved in some type of election uh, process. Uh, and it was, I was somehow a part of it, um, not as active as they were, but it was almost like I was working along with them. Um, and I, I don't know exactly what we were doing, but it was the sense that I had during that period and at the end of that uh, dream phase was that there was I won't call it an urgency but there was just sort of a okay let's keep going <laughs> mm -hmm. and and continue the process so that I would that I would uh, you know return to Hawaii and uh, and just sort of say okay let's let's you know let's not we're not going to dally anywhere. We're not going to delay anywhere, but just do what needs to be done before the final phase of the journey, and then the final phase will take place, and we will uh, um, we will uh, physically and with car make it back to the uh, go back to the islands. And uh, um, the other part of that message was that I think we're getting groups, certain groups that we might not have anticipated uh, to to kind of work with or work along with in some way. Um, so I don't have all the answers about it, but they will come. And if there's any more information that needs to come out, then I'm sure that, um, you know, I'm sure that uh, it will, you know, I'll get it. So uh, mm. yeah, but but I hope that... everyone is well over there. Well, you're doing some good work there, KP. Well, thank you, Nikki. I'm uh, not sure if I've ever spoken with you uh, directly like this before, but uh, I, I know you are too, and, and you know everybody who's on the call and everyone listening to the call, uh, I, I know are getting, if, if it doesn't seem like you have a, a, a mission going on, it's like, well, this, this probably is part of your mission, just to, to listen and to have the seeds planted that, there's so many seeds being planted around that that uh, 
the one that you that is yours to caretake, to take care of, and to help grow and blossom, is uh, is being shared via these calls. Um, there's a ton of information coming out that just you know ever since I started listening to the to the Andrew, um, it was like my goodness, there's so much coming out that that is really resonating and and wow, this is like wow, this is uh, so I. I seem to be saying wow a lot more these days than I used to. <laughs> yeah, me, me too, KP. And and uh, the the idea that just listening to these shows is is part of the the things that people need to be doing, I think, is is becoming more and more more and more obvious. And as an example, the journey that you're on, the the giant infinity sign right around the USA, I I've just um, I'm under the impression that you're actually kind of gathering souls as you go. It's it's not necessarily that you went on a journey and a whole lot of people were were there and started with you. I I just have this feeling mm-hmm. that you're gathering more and more and more as you go along to pull them out of the uh, literally the the time loop, the the trap that we're in in time to resolve that for them. <clears throat> so it's. Um, <clears throat> Even oh, more, even more also. important that. Um, sorry, sorry, Nikki. I just finished my thought. Otherwise, I'll, I'll lose it. Um, I'm sorry. It's um, it's probably even more important. And there's there's no doubt a reason that your voice is being heard on shows like this one as you're going through the journey because it's probably triggering more and more of that effect as well. Because energetically, we we can only guess as to the overall effects that shows like this and all the other shows that are going on on, on other networks that are all covering all sorts of stuff that people, if they're listening to it, they need to be hearing it. And the amount of radio that's going to air on the alternate media is huge. There are literally tens of thousands of hours per week, I think, of, of, of spoken mm-hmm. thought that's never reached the collective before. And I think that's one of the things that's really, really helping to wake up the collective. Uh, now, sorry I interrupted you, Nikki. Would you want to continue with your No, no, it was, it was me interrupted you. And uh, it was well said, Chris. And, you know, KP, you've done so much. Everywhere you go, it's like you, uh, you and as Chris said, you know, you do pull people out from those timeline, And you basically pull them out until you clean them up as well. Okay? I don't know if you see that or you feel that, but you clean them up. Uh, in the energy field, karmically as well, and um, you also planted some lot of seeds. And a lot of times, um, you know, the seed doesn't sprout, and it's this time, special time period. Now, a lot of seeds are sprouting. Leaves are coming out. They're reaching out to the sun. Mm. You see, now they're connecting to the sun, and and they they are accepting of the water which is the life force that's coming in and they start to sprout out and becoming its yeah. individual individuality and the, the self empowerment and we're, we're seeing a lot of that now because of people like you and Andrew that disseminates these sorts of information it's well, thank uh, you for that yeah in fact even your blog KP I think has had a had a big impact Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's been out there for several years now, and and there's been a if you just look at it as a body of thought. You know, I'm coming to realise the just the sheer importance of human thought. We now have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of minds focusing on this issue of of our evolution and realising how important. That individual thought is. I think we just can't underestimate it because you know thought is thought is a real energy. It's a real thing. So right. it is, Chris, and that's why it's, it's crucial that we learn how to control our thoughts and not to be. When I say self empowerment, it doesn't mean you freely go and dump your stuff to other people. That is not right. Okay, that's why in my session when I uh, provide to my clients is you have a safe space that you go and dump your stuff in there before you go and talk to somebody else. Because when you're in somebody else's field, you, you project all your dumping stuff to them. You're causing harm to their energy field, okay? And those people who are not stabilized, okay, um, or don't know how to transmute the energy will have more side effects on them 
You see mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So as a conscious, self-empowered individual, we have to take responsibility. And the integrity comes with that. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, we talk about a lot about people awakening and self-empowerment. We don't know how to. What comes with that, you know, in terms of human behaviors, mm. the thought. The action, what do we eat? How do we take care of our body? It's so vital because if you've been hit by other people projecting them, their dumping energy to you, you can actually cause, uh, can cause physical harm. Cause yeah. physical harm. Yeah. Some, of the, some of the signs and symptoms are having a cold. You can shake. So those are no sleep. So those are signs and symptoms. Indeed. Well, one, the, one, one, one of the most valuable things I've learned on this journey is uh, to, uh, when in doubt, shut up. Yes, <laughs> Keep that your is mouth true. Shut. Yes. Because uh -huh. uh, as we go through these and just, you know, my own personal, uh, on this travel, it's like, and I'm staying with various people, and of course every everyone takes care of their own space in their own way and as they're sharing their space with me it's it's uh there there the things that come up that says oh this this is sort of this way and that's sort of that way and if it were my place i wouldn't have it this way and all this and all that and it's like and the, there's a there's an ego part i know that wants to just blurt out and basically i just have to talk to you know i kind of talk to it and they say look just just hold off relax, you know, take the best and leave the rest mm -hmm. because the rest will, is trying to, to express itself. And in other words, there's something clearing I know within me as this journey goes on. It's part of my own personal uh, clearing or transformation or transmutation. And uh, I noticed that uh, as I just sort of step back from that, that ego uh, almost a need to, uh, to to either criticize or say I wouldn't do this or I wouldn't do that. I just you know just go back into the place of of peace and just say you know hey just take the best, leave the rest, and that will all work out for them in their own in the way that's natural for them. And whether it could be that's working out for me, that I'm realizing that say you know I oh I don't my, the bed is maybe six inches higher than I'm normally used to or six inches lower, some little things like that, that in the overall scope of things, that doesn't make any difference. Um, so that's kind of what I've been getting. And, yeah. and that's, that's a great tip because i got to tell you, you know, a lot of times people see things only they can see so far, okay? They can't see beyond the whole entire scope, the holistic thing in the macro scope of things. A lot of times we see things as like cookie crumbs, you know, and then they go and they express themselves and they project that on other people and also for themselves. And so it can be self-damaging because they, they can't see the outside. They can only see cookie crumbs. You see what I mean? That's why, yes, it is important to whatever, you know, the impression or or ideas, or you need to explode, you know, to express yourself, T test it out, you know, <laughs> mm. calm yourself down, spit mm. it out in the closet, somewhere it's safe, count to three before, you know, decide, uh, vote, that's what I always say, do a count, should I go and talk, you know, all three yeses, then you do it, if you have one no, then you don't say anything, just shut up, mm. and go to your, your sacred place, and resolve that or resolve it with someone that can help you, you know, the, um, talking through. Because a lot of times we know the answers. We know the answers because our ego and, and insecurities don't allow us and the fear included don't allow us to see beyond that. And this is where a lot of times I think um, uh, light workers get mistaken that, oh, and also the psychologist, you know, they'll tell you, you know, whatever's on your mind, you need to express yourself. But, you know, I define that in terms of how do you safely express yourself in an appropriate manner that will not damage or uh, influence other people negatively. Mm. There was a, 
a very interesting phrase in one of Heather Tucci's documents earlier this year, which actually dealt with um, uh, changing someone's energy levels. Mm -hmm. Okay, in fact, um, it was. And I forget exactly which one it was. It, this was relating to having your energy feel damaged rather than enhanced, because it mm -hmm. was it was um, you know this is a legal document dealing with the uh, you know the stoush that that uh, Heather was having Heather and the other trustees were having with the uh, literally the powers that were, and it was saying you know if if there is any noticeable change negative change to an energy field, then you're doing harm. Now, this is something that we need to become more aware of as as subtle energies become more and more available to us, we have to be responsible with them, which goes right back to the start of this part of the conversation where Nikki said we have to be learn to be responsible for everything that we do. And of course, it applies to simply the way you use your voice and when you use it. And the value of silence cannot be overestimated. As Nikki just pointed out, if you're in a situation where you... You know, you feel compelled, in fact, KP pointed out, feeling compelled to comment for whatever reason, whether it's just simply that, you know, it's it's pinged your radar at some emotional level or whether you, you know, just don't like where that chair is over there. Think first before you actually act on that impulse because it it's not just the fact that you might be moving a chair from one spot to another where people will trip over it. It's the fact that you actually emote, you actually energetically affect people um, mm -hmm. by with your actions, with your voice, and it's it's a layer of of human interaction that we're not used to taking into our conscious thoughts and actions. We're not used to consciously considering it. You know, am I going to, you know, damage this person's energy field by psychically vomiting on them because I'm right. I'm upset about something? It's my problem, not theirs. Okay, if it's something that relates to them, yes, I need to communicate it to them, but I don't need to dump all my emotions on them because that will affect their field. And as okay. things become more energetically centered, where the energetics become really important, it's just one other aspect of human communications that we're going to have to tune into and deal with in a respectful fashion because it gets back to respecting the other person's sovereignty. And I don't have a right to dump all my stuff on you just because I've had a bad day. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't help me to resolve the bad day I've had, but it has to be by agreement. Okay, you know, for instance, <clears throat> you arrive home and you're feeling really crappy. You don't just dump. You say, I've had a really bad day. You know, may I share it with you so you can help me get rid of it? that would be um, essentially an offer, if you like, an offer of energetic contract at, a, at another level. And then it gives the other person the opportunity to say, you look happy too, I can see you're feeling really crappy, um, you know, let's talk about it. Or they can say, well, I've had a bad day myself, let's just, let's just eat and, and we'll talk about it later. You know, it becomes something like that. We are, we are really aware at, at a conscious level of this interplay of energies. It's, it's not just, you know... Uh, you're my partner, you're my wife, I've had a bad day, I'm going to come home and you're going to cop it. You know, it's it's another layer of, of uh, dealing with one another that simply needs to be um, uh, assimilated into our activities. We need, in fact, we Nikki, we need to be taught about this as children. Yes, That's it is it true. And, and Chris, I'm so happy that you brought up about being considerate and uh, integrity and and you know people think that you know you put light workers together soul family together it doesn't matter it just even just family whatever that may be just group of people there always has to be boundary respected when you mix that up it gets confused and then people go crazy and they have no control and they lose their grounding and you don't want that that actually causing further harm there has always have to be a boundary between each individual person and it has to be respected. You know, a lot of times, like you said, the example, I see that chair. Oh, I don't like that chair. Well, is it you don't like the chair? See, a lot of times we put so much emotional attachment to the object when it's not necessary. Can you also say, well, the chair doesn't look very comfortable for my body. 
There's no emotional attachment to that versus I don't like that chair. Mm, yes. You see what I mean? Yep. And yeah, and that that is the teaching of no emotional attachment, no attachment. And I like that better because it makes you more grounded. You're looking at the object for what it is, right? Objectively, in terms of design or color, you know, um, functionality, practicality for how it fits your body. Okay, not because I don't like it. That's put. That's being judgmental. Do you mm. see what I mean? Yes, and that brings a lot of polarity into it. Yes, and you can do that. that. We can. You can do that if you want to, but just be aware that is you know bringing polarity to a situation will also bring you know um, well, we, bring we energy to you lot. that you may not want. Right, and and when a person initiates those words and thoughts. They're actually causing harm to themselves and also they're programming themselves. And in many of our talks, we have talked about, we point fingers at how the media and the Illuminati and all these governments program us. It is us that we also program ourselves and we need to deprogram, take the initiation and stop ourselves from allowing us and subjecting us to do that instead of pointing fingers at the bad people because we ultimately we decide. We are the one who decide whether we choose to be um, emotional, having emotional attachment to objects. We are the one that who decide how we want it to be programmed. Mm. It even gets and down to... It gets down to things like um, um, losing weight, for instance, is a really big problem for a lot of people because they've been programmed to uh, to certain, uh, programmed emotionally to certain experiences with food, and not just the taste of food or the texture of food, but how food affects their mood. They they uh, they become programmed, whether they're aware of it or not, to using food as uh, a matter of emotional comfort. Um, or you know, it just becomes a habit that they become. You know, they become addicted to certain types of food, certain flavors of food, and just being aware of the yeah. fact that it's a programming process, and actually you're in charge of it. And another thing is that, Chris, that, you know, that allows we, people we to have, deprogram. Yeah. Yeah, and and talk about programming. We this is like a whole different you know show in itself. But you know, a lot of times, you know, why people eat, emotional attachment. Okay, maybe uh, remember your grandmother's apple pie. <laughs> when you yes. eat apple pie, you think of your grandmother. That is being programmed because you facilitate the, the, the behavior associated with the object and the experience. That's called programming. Mm, indeed. Okay, a lot of times we've been programmed for that. It's Eating emotionally, emotional attachment, um, um, you know, reminiscing about life, your, your past experiences, things like that. So bringing consciousness to it, bring awareness, make you realize, oh, why am I wanting to eat apple pie? Because I remember the experience and the love that I had with my grandmother. It's the yeah, so association, okay? Yeah. In fact, so we one, have to recognize that. Yeah, we, we need to take a break. And I'll just, just finish okay. that thought for you, Nikki. One of the things that... Um, because uh, everyone has everyone has addictions to food. I mean, I've I've been addicted for choc to chocolate for a really long time, but I know it, and I know that I can deprogram it. I don't necessarily want to, but I can have a chocolate experience by just having a very small piece, okay, and then yeah, consciously right. co consciously having the experience of chocolate, and then I'll just stop because I've had the experience, and that's all I really needed. I don't really right. need to and eat the whole bar. I just need to have that little chocolate experience for a moment and then, yeah. and then choose to move on. That's right. And that's because you're awakened and aware of your experience, whereas other people, they don't even know or, or why they wanted to eat apple pies and they eat tons of it until they like gain weight and become unhealthy when they don't realize that I, I truly miss the love of my grandmother. And that's what they miss. Mm. That's why they keep eating the apple pie. Mm. When you're not awake and aware, you, you continue to eat the apple pie. Mm. And this is just a cookie cutter for other experiences as well. Yeah, everything, and, everything and have, is similar. Yeah, and everything is similar. It's, it's, it's just about programming, okay? Now, to deprogram is to be awakened and say, okay, I know the reason why I'm eating a lot of apple pie because I miss my grandmother. So instead of 
instead of eating the apple pie, I can have one or two bites, and then I'm going to go and connect with my grandmother. Once you connect with grandmother, you won't need to eat the apple pie. Indeed. Because now you're satisfied. Yeah. You're satisfied truly what is the heart, the root of the problem, what is needed. This is what your soul, your physical body, emotional, mental aspect needed was to be connected with the love from your grandmother and for, to fulfill that experience. And one of the things that I like my product, the tea nano, is that, you know, a lot of times, like I said, we go through that negative experiences, okay? The tea nano will help you sustain that high frequency where you don't need to go and, and up and down having that yo-yo experience. Indeed. Great thought, Nikki. Nikki, we're going to take a short break so people can actually um, grab a drink or go to the bathroom, and uh, we will continue the conversation afterwards. But we're going to we're going to actually press on and talk a bit, um, and and I hope, I'm hoping KP will stick with us. We're going to talk a bit more about the human body. So we'll see you in about four minutes, guys. And we're back. Glad you've joined us today, folks. This is the Galactic History Show, having a session just with um, myself and Nikki Fetzi. Andrew was resting his voice today. And we have a, a guest in the studio, Quile Pele, who's been on a massive journey around the United States. And we were talking before the break about various aspects of human interaction, uh, which was really quite interesting. And I, and I guess it needed to be out there because we put it out there. And in this half of the show, we're going to move on to more of the subject we've been dealing with uh, with Nikki for, for some weeks now, which is the human body. But before we do, we just wanted to thank KP for joining us and uh, wish him all the best on his journey and, and find out if there's anything else on his mind that he wants to actually bring to us before he moves on with his day. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening and being a part of this uh, adventure that we're all on, and uh, the, what it was, what had come up was, I just wanted to mention yesterday, I've, uh, I've I, I met someone uh, who lives uh, relatively close by to where I am, and uh, her name is Sophia Love, and some of you may have read her pieces on the, on, on the, um, talk about apple pie, how about a piece of Sophia Love? Yeah, look, I love her stuff. Uh, you know, not to, yeah. too find a point on the love side of it, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm jealous, KP. You you've you've got to meet Sophia, and I imagine the the impression that you get from people's writings, um, I find is usually pretty accurate. So I'm jealous. There you go. Well, that's okay. We all have the, we all the freedom to be, uh, you know, that way, and it's kind of a, a deal where we actually got together and, and speak of jealous we we did indulge in some wonderful chocolate delights that they had over there um uh, this coffee shop and uh and so that was you know it was, it was wonderful to meet her and this has happened along the way i met aaron and rochester and of course hollis in vermont and there's a lot of folks i've heard of um but uh you know, had not actually met in person, and now I'm having the chance, the opportunity to meet a lot of uh, people in person, in body, and uh, that seems to be a whole part of the experience here. And uh, I, I sensed that there were a couple of uh, uh, pieces that were added on to the to the grand infinity loop, and it appears. Uh, one of them I can mention, the other one I have to hold off on for the moment, but there's a couple of smaller pieces before the final leg, and uh, I will mention one that appears that appears to be going, taking me up to Thunder Bay, uh, which is in Ontario. And I may, have just, I may have talked about this the last time, but it has to do with connecting and you were talking earlier about the water. There's a lot of people working with water. Um, and in this particular journey, a lot of work, a lot of things with water are happening uh, for the clarification, apparently, and for the, I think, the upraising, the, the, the uh, higher energizing of all of the water systems of the planet. And uh, when I was traveling through 
coming through, um, you know, it was a one-night journey through Canada, and we went past Montreal, over the river, and we probably did a little bit of work there, and then we went to Ottawa, and that that was part of Ottawa. Of course, that's the capital of of uh, Canada, the Can the Canada Corporation, and so we did something there, and then we we crossed back over into the United States at sort of the upper part of the um, what do you call it, the St. Lawrence Waterway, and so at that point, an energetic crystal was released uh, at that part of the waterway, which is the far east east of the of the uh, major Great Lake uh, Great Lakes. And so this operation coming up now at Thunder Bay really felt like it was a completion of that uh, of that uh, clarification of the entire uh, North American Lake system. So um, Sophia was well kind enough to uh, she brought a, she said I know you need this crystal it's not mine anymore so she gave me a crystal and. That will be used. I feel that will be used for this uh, this part of the of the uh, of the mission of the journey. And <clears throat> once that is finished, the, uh, the, I will come back probably to the same point I'm at now. And then there appears to be one more piece uh, to do before the final long leg, which is really kind of through the southwest. So. Um, so that's kind of the news, um, and the great thing about it is that each part of the each each part of this is is sort of um, communicated as it's needed, um, and it's just as a matter of just allowing it to happen, not trying to define it, not trying to say, well, it's, I've got to go here, I've got to go there. There's no got tos, there's no have tos. It's simply allowing the messages to come. And following those messages and following the guidance and always trying, you know, re really a lot of it is just attuning to the, to the joy I feel when the path, uh, when the path shows up. And so, um, so that's kind of the news from this end. And uh, I sure appreciate everyone's support and love and uh, just continue, uh, continue on traveling with, with all of us as we grow and continue uh, the, this this grand journey mm. and and it is a grand journey it's kp it's really, really amazing I'm getting amazing. a big echo from you here so it's a little little hard to speak oh, but i'll press uh, could you mute uh, that's excellent um i was wondering whether in fact everybody you're meeting along the way is is completely connected into from a uh a, a from a historical point of view, to this journey that you're taking, because Andrew indicated that that um, it has its roots in the time wars and and the the actual great confusion that the layers and layers of paradoxes have caused to all the timelines for a very long time. And I just wonder whether virtually everybody that you've met is completely connected and involved in that whole process uh, because I suspect that they are well it certainly feels that way uh, it's just so you know I mean serendipity is wonderful but I just feel that there's a, a harmonizing of all of these elements um, and whatever consciousness level they are at uh, there's this harmonization and synchronization if you want to call it that speaking of time uh that yes i do get that i do get that and folks just all out of the blue will say send me an email and say oh well if you head this way if you're heading this way um feel free to call us and you can stay at our place or or we we we, we you know join you or something like that and um so Mm. I, I definitely get that. Definitely get that. Yeah, you know, the connectedness of all things is something that's jumping right out at everybody at the moment, and I think we're all understanding just how interconnected everything is and and will continue to be. And it's a, it becomes a celebration in the end. You know, for instance, um, 
one of the things that we can do for you is is if you if you can project your route a few days ahead of time by dropping in regularly um, we can just keep those connections coming through more and more for you if if, um, if we can you know well, KP, uh, I KP I actually picked up some of your energy um, I, as I tune into you when you were talking how's your uh, third and uh, second chakra Well, your second, your third chakra, it's like this mid alignment that also shoot up slightly to the bot at the bottom of your uh, heart. Well, there could be. Um, I don't really spend a lot of um, time looking at it, but I haven't, you know, I haven't really. But I, I, I have sensed one thing. I did sense beforehand was that I needed to. Uh, uh, there's a, there's a, that was another thing. Sophia mentioned several people that she knows in the area where you know where we are physically right now that um, okay. might be helpful for me to see. Well, so, would uh, you, uh, may I may I give you a gift? Sure. GP? I accept okay. it. Okay. Um, I, I, it's, it's such an honor to be able to uh, meet somebody like you who go cross country and do work that you do. And I know it's time consuming. You give up your life, um, also, you know, um, financially as well. So, uh, if I may, I'd like to give you a gift, and um, I can uh, help you work on those areas. We can do it on air if we have. It, would that be all right, Chris? For us to do that really fast for KP. Well, sure. Uh, provided okay, if so, KP's happy to anyway, do that. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, if it's possible um, to do this uh, off the air, I'm kind of a little bit, um, let's put it this way. I have a few more minutes that I have to be off. So um, if you wouldn't mind working off the air, I'd, I'd prefer that. Okay. Because we can tune okay, in. We can that's tune fine. In. We could do that. And then, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then you just guide me when you're when you're ready, and um, okay, so yeah, because I'm feeling it right now, it goes all the way right. up right now to my heart chakra, and it's how you right. process the energy, and right. um, what I can do is deconstruct your uh, body matrix, just like what I've done for Chris, and you'll be able to process the energy much faster, faster. Okay. I'll send you a Skype when uh, when when I'm ready for that. Mm. Mm, and I know. it's a good time. For that. Yeah, and you will you will feel that KP. I certainly I certainly yeah. did. Yeah, made a big difference. So, uh, well, thank you so much, Nikki. And um, that's basically my uh, my journey report for now. And uh, I'm really grateful that everyone's there. And uh, so. In order to continue the journey, there's a couple things I need to purchase at a store nearby here, and so I think I'll go off and do that, and then I'll listen to the rest of the show later. Great stuff, KP. Look, just keep in touch, and uh, we will um, take it right out to the party at the end. That's right. Oh, grand party. <laughs> grand party. <laughs> Well, if you put right. out you, if you put out an invitation, you you might need to take uh, you know do two trips down to the down to the shop to buy party supplies. <laughs> yeah. Could well, be. like I say, I've got a member. I've got membership, so uh, you know we're all members of this grand uh, adventure. So um, um, it'll all be taken care of. Excellent. Thank you for joining us, KP. We'll speak soon. My pleasure. Cheers. Okay. Aloha to all of you. Aloha. Okay, Nikki. Well, we didn't really quite have the I show. Aloha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely need to do some work on him. <laughs> yes, uh, you're obviously... It's, it's uh, always good to uh, do that because it, it really helps your energy, uh, your body um, transmute or, you know, work on the energy much better rate and work on that level. Yes. Yeah, it's um, it made a, a very interesting difference to um, my experience, shall we say. Yeah. 
So, mm -hmm. Nikki, let's... And then also, when, when you're ready, also, Chris, you you got to do your ancestral karmic release. <laughs> yes, yes, that's, when you're that's ready. the next step. Yep. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, be the next. we'll talk about that um, uh, off air and, and sort out how to do that and when. And that will be that will be fantastic, actually. That will be really good. Now, Nikki, we have one caller here who's been hanging on for a while. Let's take that call uh, and see what's on their mind. Okay, area code 785. Could we have your name and your question, please? Uh, Carlos. Carlos, yeah, how are you? Yes, yeah, pretty good. How are you? Good. Good. Uh, Hi, my Carlos. question is, Nikki um, or Chris, if you've heard of Laminine, uh, it's a supplement that the um, Hollow Earth Network has been kind of talking about. And uh, so I was wondering if you heard about Laminine at all. How do you spell that, Carlos? Uh, L-A-M-I-N-I-N-E. And it's a natural supplement, supposedly it's a natural supplement, and uh, it's supposed to be thought up by the Agarthans. And uh, there's been a lot of, you can YouTube um, laminine testimonials, and people are saying this is a great product, they take it, and, you know, it, it, um, it helps heal and balance and uh, a lot of people who have like had diabetes or pretty much anything, it, um, I guess reverses that. So I don't know if it's true or not. Um, so I just wanted to know if you guys um, ever heard of it. Uh, no, I haven't. I have not heard of it, Carlos. Nikki, did you hear that well enough? You just commented that you were having trouble hearing the caller. Um, I, I'm not quite sure um, what I've heard because it was all broken up, but I'll try my best to answer the question for uh, Carlos and our listeners out there. Um, okay, you're you're actually suffering a little too at the moment, Nikki. Um, um, thank you so much for calling and asking that good question because it is important to... Uh, uh oh can you hear can you hear me better? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's okay. Hello? That's okay now, me? Nikki. That's okay now, Nikki. Yep. Yeah, keep going. Lemonine. Okay. Um, so lemonine, um, I I really feel like okay, here's my here's my take on a lot of the supplements out there. Okay. And it is in human nature that we tend to seek like mystical things to heal that fast healing for the physical body. Okay. Lemonine is to me it's like uh, this is what I saw, okay? It is, it is a supplement that is um, um, created, okay, uh, from outside the earth, mixed in with earth um, elements. But see, the thing is, let's be practical, okay? How do we get our hands on that and how much is it going to cost? Do you remember Moldavite people want point or totally into Maldivite. Now there's no more Maldivite and the price, you know, went off the roof. My thing is, okay, be practical. There are a lot of things we can do to self-heal ourselves, such as self-meditation. I self-heal myself from tuberculosis just by self-meditation, okay? A lot of mine is just another object, okay, that enter in our reality and it's an extraction from us to go in within and self-heal. And self-healing meditation is by far least expensive in terms of cost. But it is more valuable. It is priceless because it takes a lot of time, energy, commitment, change of lifestyle, okay, to go with in and reclaim that. Do you see what I mean, Carlos? Yeah, I do. Um, and you know, I just kind of yeah um, because I took that's, it, that's not I took it for a yeah month. that's not one uh, there there are other stuff out there besides 
uh, let in mind that you mentioned, okay, that claim to have mayor goals, okay? Just remember that each individual human being is a miracle. We are the miracle. And people don't want to go within. Mm. People don't want to, to go within and self-heal and see our true skeleton in the closet so they continue to see their supplements. Okay, you can heal physical, but it will not heal your mental, emotional, and spiritual. That has to be done on the mental processing. There is no such thing as miracle pill that you take, and then all of a sudden you become with you become wise and have wisdom and reach enlightenment. There's no thing that comes from within. That's why we have the human skin suit technology that comes with divinity with divinity right just for uh, just for my information <laughs> Carlos is this is this like a mineral supplement or is it a well uh, it's a, a combination of things what actually is it it's derived from a uh, egg it's um, supposedly like uh, there's a incubation period or something like I think after nine or ten days there's somehow this um, I don't know what you call it, you know. Uh, but that they said it's from the egg. Some doctor in like Switzerland was researching it, and uh, he extracted this this uh, from the egg. The uh, I can't remember what it is, but and then it's supposed to be mixed in with all uh, natural foods or whatever, super high foods, super raw foods or something like that, and. Uh, so I was just wondering if you guys heard of it because uh, they've been kind of peddling it for a while and uh, people, people I don't know if they find people just say these things or if people are actually having an effect on them that is really, truly, you know, helping them. So I didn't know. So And I wanted Nikki's uh, advice because she probably know more. I don't know. So And, and, and sure. I like her aspect. I really do. It's... um. I've, and I've gone that way, too. I don't really meditate much, and I know I should do it more often, but um, I really don't have any ailments except for, um, which I was going to ask her about her uh, nanotechnology. I've had this ringing ear for ever since I can remember, and I didn't know if if maybe her, like, the disc would help alleviate that or... Um, Maybe go and maybe do some meditating, like like you said. So, and you know, um, when the way you describe how it's made, okay, the concept is actually with the egg concept. It's not from here, okay. I I see this. It's not from Earth. The whole concept of creating and um, with with the neutrons from uh, the egg, okay. <laughs> That's just like I mean when. You know, the description of mixing egg, okay, whatever the whole egg plus raw food. Mm. 50% vegetarian, 40% whatever you want to eat, it's up to you because it allows you to have the freedom. It's about the freedom to choose, having the option but not going crazy. And that comes with having the boundaries having the boundaries of what is for your highest good and what's not for your highest good, okay? Our body, each individual person is unique to his, his or her own, okay? So to me, becoming raw vegetarian is not, it's not, it's not enough because, like I said, everyone's different. So when I do the 60% vegetarian, 40% whatever, I'm allowing myself to eat eggs. So if you can do raw eggs, I mean eggs, just eggs plus raw food, you're already satisfying what you, the claim of lalamine. You see what I mean? Right. right? Yeah. So there are a lot of food sources on Earth that are not from Earth. They're actually transplanted from other um, planets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, there are food sources from other planets. 
Nick, you're uh, being transplanted to Earth. So there are some that one can conceive and one you should not. And it depends as well on where you are from and what your karmic energy as well as what ET ancestor you are as well. So it will affect what you eat. Yeah. Okay, Carlos, um, thank you for the call. You bet. Bringing that, bringing that to our attention, that's, that is very interesting. And yeah, look, med meditation is something that is something you have to shift your lifestyle to really adopt. And so it's, a, it's a, another exercise in changing habits. And, and uh, of course, you know, we all struggle to shift our habits. So, but as Nikki has pointed out, the technology that we have far exceeds anything that comes from the outside. It's one of the big messages that we've been getting for a while now. So. We'll leave you with that thought, and I'll pop you back on and hold. I wanted to... Nikki, um, Nikki, I'm going to I'm going to actually call you and back Chris, on your. If I may, I'd like to extrapolate on that whole concept about addiction. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, Nikki, I'm going to call you back on your mobile, okay? Because you're fading in and out too much at the moment. Can you hear me, Nikki? Okay, she is. Um, we're we're breaking up at both ends, so I'll just call her back, and that'll take care of the problem. Skype is quite amazing, folks. I never cease to be impressed by how how we can communicate with it. This will hopefully take care of our fade out problem. You might notice when Nikki gets a bit excited, immediately the problems become worse. I've noticed this with a number of energetic folk that they... Um... Hmm. Hi, you have... I think I've reached her office phone. <laughs> I'll just have to grab her mobile number. This will take just a moment. Call again. Okie dokie. It's live radio, folks. What can I say? Please state your name after the tone, and Google Voice will try to reach. Nikki Tetsi with no... Okay, I think I'm back on air again now. Um, we actually dropped the whole line to blog talk just at that moment, so I'll call Nikki back in and uh, we shall press on. There we go. Okay. Sorry about this, folks. The um, degree of um, difficulty is often related to Andrew's presence on the Hello. call with Nikki. Please state your name after the tone and Google Voice will try to reach. Hmm. Nikki Tetsi with Nano Crystal. Okay, we'll go back to Skype and see how we can go this time with a reset line. Hi, Chris. Hi, Nikki. Having trouble getting through to you on the mobile or on on the number that I've got for you. Um, I'll have to check the numbers that you're actually. Uh, on there, we'll just we'll just continue with Skype for a minute, so we're not jumping in and out too much. We've only got about fifteen okay. minutes to go. Okay, so we started off with the show with an intention to actually talk about some more of the um, the human body aspects, but um, the call with KP was was good and it was fun, and obviously needed to get out there because now it's out there. So for the last few minutes of the show, would you like to touch on uh, some of the things that's on our short little list here of, of yet-to-be-discussed items on the human body from a, from a sexuality and health point of view? Well, from, you know, I stress a lot on the physical well-being, and it does have an effect on uh, our mental, emotional, and spiritual, okay? And... You know, everything we talked about today in terms of uh, having boundaries or vomiting um, our emotions or psychically to other people, all of this affects our uh, 
sexuality as well because a lot of times you know we, we joke around or say things and and that part of um affirmation okay to our consciousness at cellular level even if you're joking around so we have to really be cautious about what it is that we're joking around you know and and there's boundaries and this boundary is for oneself it is not for being considerate to other people's space um but there's also consideration of self-respect and honoring and integrity for one's individual um energy field okay and programming your entire system in terms of uh sexuality um how oh my gosh it's such a big uh topic to talk about yeah, is there we, any questions? Should we start off with questions that you may have? Yep. Well, uh, there was a couple of items on the list that needed to be to be talked about, and um, one of them for males was actually erectile dysfunction. That's mm -hmm. that's probably one that we can we can actually deal with here. Oh, eat a lot of pistachio. <laughs> Sorry. That will help a lot. Eat a lot of pistachio nuts. Pistachio. That will now, help with erectile you've made that you've made that comment before, Nikki. What's yeah. the um, what's mm -hmm. the the mechanism by which pistachio is actually assisting? Well, it's it's the uh, the, the nutrient content, okay, in pistachio that's unique in its um, in its um, protein that helps with erectile dysfunction. Okay, but the, the erectile dysfunction doesn't come just on the physical. It's also on the mental and emotional experiences that one have had. Okay, so for example, like I said, you know, you, you, the, if you clean out your closet, okay, honoring the body for what it is, you will actually literally connecting. Okay, we're talking about connection again with the inner body, and you can activate your own. Um, sexual hypersensitivity, shall we say? Can you hear me? Yeah, Nikki. Um, I've just added your phone number, your cell phone number. You're breaking up really badly. I will actually do the dial-up thing again. Just hold there, okay. and we'll we'll just pull you back in because it's really getting quite difficult. Trying again, folks. This time it should be the correct number. Hi, Chris. There we go. That's better. Okay, much better. <laughs> yes. Now so, we'll um, we're, okay, uh, as I was saying, I don't know if um, a listener caught this part, but to eat a lot of um, pistachio nuts, because the pistachio has this uh, chemical compound that goes and helps um, um, with the body, um, the male or, uh, sexual organs. But it's not just the food in itself, you know, there's other components that participate in the human sexuality. That is, yes, you have to have a healthy liver. Yes, you have to have healthy spleen. You need the sugar to be able to support uh, when you're having uh, working up on the orgasm. You know, the the human um, male uh, penis it has a lot. It's pure muscles, pure muscle. That means it consume a lot a lot of energy, okay, when it, 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 um, when it goes into a um, certain heightened state of sexuality, okay. So you need supplement nutrient, you need good blood flow to flow through that. But when you have emotional or um, mental negative experience that hamper you from allowing the energy to flow through that area, you can have erectile dysfunction. You see what I mean? So whenever you look at um, human sexuality, you got to look at the entire concept of the human whole concept. And that is very much the Eastern philosophy teaching in health. Okay? So um, check your mind, check your thoughts, check on your uh, childhood experiences, past life karma that could be causing this. Okay, so you got to clean all that out and then allow the energy to flow down to your root chakra if you wanted to correct the erectile dysfunction. 
Uh, just a quick practical question. Um, you're pointing at you're pointing at pistachio as being very useful. Uh, how, uh, pistachio is generally presented as either roasted or unroasted, and I presume that unroasted would be more desirable because it's in its fully yes. natural state. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. yep. And how mu how much? I mean, pistachio nuts in and of themselves are pretty small. So if you're going to use pistachio to assist, um, how many would you eat? What's useful? You know, I, I think that people would want to concrete quantities and numbers in, in terms of cups or measurements. But honestly, it really depends on individual. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you know, like for some some men, they really need to eat it daily, like half a cup, a cup daily. Mm -hmm. Okay, some men eat, need less because you have to really evaluate on individual case by cases, and you know, some men they're already. Um, in top shape health, but on the mental aspect, they're not. have a lot of closet stuff they need to deal with, so they may not need to eat as much. They may need to just go resolve their emotional, mental uh, aspect. But the other one, on the physical level, they need help on that physical level, but they're cleaned up with their you know, emotional uh, closet. So it's really case by cases. Yeah. That's but on yeah, generally speaking, for those of you who still want the numbers, you can eat about, you know, half a cup, three-fourth cup, a cup. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's okay. It can't kill you. Can no, I well, kill you? No, pistachios. <laughs> I mean, I, I I really like pistachios, so that's you know that's a good thing. Yeah, and you some, can't some people, OD on it. <laughs> you can, can you? No, you cannot OD oh, on it. You can't it, OD no. on it. Yeah, yes. No, no you I cannot. <laughs> no, I, I didn't think so. I mean, pistachio uh, is is a particularly pleasant little nut from my perspective. So, in fact, what I actually like to eat is a mixture of pistachios and almonds because there's a nice little contrast going on there. Right. But um, and uh, and also um, walnuts are great too. It helps actually uh, strengthen your sperm. Strengthen your sperm. Very good. Okay, so the sperm gotta travel, right? It's gotta travel <laughs> mm -hmm. up the stream. <laughs> so the mobility counts. Okay, so that the that helps. Like I said, it's not just you know the food in itself. You gotta look at the entire uh, physical body. The package. If you have, yeah, it's whole package. You know, the liver needs to um, uh, clean the body out of heavy metal, detox, and you want to have good, clean sperm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you need to have a high functioning, healthy. Liver. Any tips on any stuff. any tips on foods that specifically for cleansing the liver? Um, beets are great, and you know I mentioned a lot of on my galactic juice recipe, mm -hmm. and uh, beets are great for that. You could do milk tristle, and I would say, you know, I'm not a big believer in purging um, twice a year um, cleansing because it's too it's too stressful for the physical body. Okay, there are there are those that are physically healthy, generally speaking, but they need to do their you know purging, what have you. That's fine if your body is okay with it. But I would say, generally speaking, it's not the best way. It's all about maintenance, maintenance, yes. daily maintenance, changing your lifestyle to a good, healthy one. Then you don't stress out. It's not stress. Now it becomes a normal routine. Okay. That's the difference. And then in normal routine, right, even at an energetic level, we bring in good energy and we get rid of negative energy. We go into negative energy field, we absorb it, and we have to transmute that. It's a daily practice maintenance. On the energetic level, you also have to do it on the physical level as well. It's a daily processing, whether it's a conscious or subconscious level. And maintenance allow your body mind, body, and spirit to be at homeostasis, and that's called harmony. Not balance, just balance. It's harmony. Mm. It always comes back to that. Uh, in all of these discussions is... is right. all of, in fact, the whole, the whole process we're going through as a collective is actually a giant rebalancing. Yes. That's actually what's going on here. Now, Nikki, before we um, move on to any other subjects, Galactic juice. Now, it's something that you and I have discussed privately, and I'm not sure whether we've um, actually gone through your your list of favourites for inclusion in your galactic juice. And this is a blended juice. 
uh, with everything in it. Um, do you want to quickly run through your list of favorite sure. items for that tool? Um, sure. So practicality, purpose, we do, um, I, I prefer blending because one, blenders are too much cheaper than you get a real juicer. Okay, a real juicer can cost you up like to five hundred dollars, and it's to me that's not that practical financially speaking. And we have a lot of listeners that are on budget. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm 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 huge on being practical. So you do your beets, cut up your beets, put in like a half slice of uh, lemon, and uh, put half of oranges. Can be nectarine. I mean, um, uh, tangerine, and uh, do your kale, Swiss chard, arugula, pomegranate juice is wonderful, coconut uh, water is great for the electrolytes, and, um, and uh, I do wanted to add for the sexuality um, purpose is adding Napa cabbage or bok choy, either of those two, because they have these chemical compounds that actually literally go and help your body for male and female to get rid of the harmful estrogen. There are all of, there's two forms of estrogen. There's a good one and there's a bad one, okay? Both male and female do hold the estrogen um, hormone, which in our society considered the female hormone, okay? Male tend to have um, big boobs because of the bad hormones, okay? And that's not just from eating um, bad, uh, high, oily, fatty food that comes from your hormone with, like I said, you know, it's a domino effect when your liver's off, it'll cause other um, problems to other organs because they do communicate to each other. Um, so you have to uh, take care of everything, not just one focus on one organ. Okay, so do your um, uh, Napa cabbage. I, I, I tend to eat a lot of kimchi, which is raw Napa cabbage. It's not one of those foods you want to eat when you go out on a date, okay? And it could be very spicy. So spice is actually good for sex as well, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just so you know. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, to increase that, that male sexuality, you can also uh, add cinnamon. Oh, cinnamon is wonderful. Okay, you can add that, sprinkle some of that maca maca. I get that from Amazon. Um, add, definitely add protein between 30 to 40 uh, milligram per day, depending on your physical body, uh, weight and height, and also how active you are. If you do massive amount of energy work like I do, you do need quite a bit, and I'm 5 to 100 pounds on a good day. Mm. Okay, so because so, I can lose about 3 pounds. Yeah, what do you use for the protein? I do hemp, I do quinoa, and um, I do eggs. Eggs, uh, I don't do every day, maybe two, three times a month. Just depends. You know, I like to leave that option, that 40% to come in mm -hmm. and eat. And like uh, currently being on the island, it's, um, it's a little bit challenging. So, you know, um, being with the soul family, and uh, so, you know, we eat different food. And it's okay. This is why I love having that that 40% um, because I can eat pork, I can eat whatever, and feel good and not feel guilty. Mm -hmm. The key here is not feeling guilty. You see what yes. I mean? Yeah, no. You can eat healthy food, live a healthy life, but if there's a lot of shame, guilt, and doubt, then that's bad, bad energy. It's, yeah. it's better for you to have that, you know, the, the balance. Now, do you actually add, add eggs into the juice, or are you just talking about eating eggs, eggs No, separately? no, no, just separately, just separately, separately in terms of, right, because in the morning what I like to do is juice, okay, and then, um, and then after that then I can eat whatever I want. It's just in the morning, at least you get your high fiber. The key here is also high fiber because mm -hmm. it, it provides um, provide, um, environment, for your um, intestinal bacteria, the natural flora in your intestine, to strive, and it'll also go in and eat all the bugs that don't belong there. And it'll also uh, help with absorption of uh, heavy metal and um, toxic, okay? Any toxicity in your guts, it'll go and absorb and pull that out on a daily basis. And yes, you need to do it on a daily basis. So high fiber is necessary. And then sometimes I add um, uh, chia seed. I would soak it for about a couple hours, and then I put in my juice, or I'll just eat it plain, yeah. separately. 
Okay. Yeah. And then I add um, papaya uh, and pineapples are great enzyme for digestion. Okay. And um, mangoes because I like tropical fruits. And you know, and sometimes I'll add like uh, parsley are great as well uh, for detoxing. Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, different things that you like, maybe carrots and uh, tomatoes. You know, a lot of these are all organic that I grow in for my backyard and no pesticide. Um, just whatever in the local areas that you can get too. I like, you know, sometimes I'll have like 23 different um, ingredients uh, from blueberry, raspberries, um, boysenberry, whatever's in the season, add to it. Mm, mm. Yeah, you can't you can't go wrong. The more you add, yeah, so, I mean, add cucumber. Pretty much anything, Nikki. Actually, yeah, pretty much, pretty much anything. It's just a little bit of everything. And but do you, the key here is to make sure a lot of kale. A lot, lot of, of kale. A lot of kale. I do a lot of kale or Swiss chard. And and sweet potatoes. That's one of my favorite things. It really smooths out the texture. Is the uh, sweet potato, and you want to drink this within. Like ASAP after you finish blending it. Mm, mm, excellent. Yeah. It's like, pretty much pretty yeah, much. Some, pre, do you do you vary it every time by the sound of it? Yeah, I I do because it depends on what I have in my refrigerator. You know, sometimes I ran out of things and I don't put it, and I don't stress out about it. Mm -hmm. You know, the key here is not not to stress out. You know, you want to enjoy. You want to do it with um, when you're happy, and uh, you know you're going to provide this nutrients for your body, and you will feel great. Mm. You know, and and mm. when you allow yourself this to be in the state of mind, on the mental, emotional, and physical, guess what? When you have a task by high amount of negative energy and having to transmute and process also on the mental, emotional level, you will not become sick. Mm. Great That's advice. The key. Great advice. Yeah, look, there's, there's so I've, I've seen too many. <laughs> yeah, I've seen too many people get sick and they go through purging, and it's horrible for the body. If my body go through purging, I would be sick on the floor. Mm. Or you have to call nine one one, take me to the ER. <laughs> I, I I don't like that. I want smooth, you know, easy button. <laughs> it's all about maintenance. Excellent. Maintenance. Excellent. Look, it's all a matter of achieving that right set of habits to maintain the balance. Yeah. And, and, and when you have mental, mind, physical body balance, it also will affect your hormone production. That will affect your sexuality as well. Okay. There have been studies done in Nor um, Norway where, um, you know, they said uh, statistics have shown that a lot of times men are so stressed out from work and women stressed out from being domesticated wife, you know, because that's a lot of work for those mothers out there. And by the time both of them get together at night, they can't even have sex because they're so stressed out mm -hmm. on the mental and emotional level, you see. So if you take care of a lot of that, it will not have the effect on the physical body. And even if you do have the mental, emotional stress that affects the physical body, but your body is such a high frequency, okay, that it won't affect it. Mm. So you can still um, maintain that homeostasis of harmony and allow the amazing sex to happen. So statistics have shown that when men help the woman out doing domestic work, besides the bonding, creation of that, right, less stress, the couple were able to have more, most amazing sex. Yep, done that too. That Why do you think people go on vacation? Yeah. No stress, exactly. so they have amazing sex. Yep. Right? Otherwise, when you have stress, you're just having sex to de-stress. Hmm. So you're dumping, you're dumping the stress onto to your partners. Hmm. And we talked about boundaries. Remember, we talked about boundaries. We that's certainly not a good did. To have. We certainly did. No, we don't want. To, we don't want to cross that boundary because that's that's the opposite of, of what uh, you know. Sex, sex should be a communion above all things, and 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 a harmonious communion. So, uh, as soon as we add all the other stresses of life into that, that it becomes something else again. However, yeah. look, Nikki, we're 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 at the close of the show here. Thank you for your time today. We've had. A very wide-ranging discussion. All sorts of things have come and gone through the discussion. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. I certainly did. Uh, 
a uh, lot of good information too. Not not the same kind of you know uh, powerhouse fire hose that uh, Andrew Bartzis uh, produces, but it's all about us achieving balance and harmony in our lives and the knowledge to do that is, is something that we really need to put out there and above all the thought right. b above all the thought that 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 we actually do have uh, for every minute every minute and every moment of our lives we do have the choice to actually achieve that harmony above yes. all if we choose and, it first um, of all we we're, we're halfway there yes and uh and you know, it's, it, life is all about being in the harmony, harmony of the environment, harmony within ourselves, and harmony with the people that are with. Okay, so there are boundaries, there are you know reservation of the integrity and consideration for each other and for ourselves. Because you respect yourself, you respect others as well, rather than just dumping onto each other, and that will affect you. Uh, on your body, your hormone. Yes, it will affect your hormone. When it affects your hormone, it affects your sexuality. That's why I keep saying I create my technology to help people sustain that high frequency because once you're able to sustain that, sex is actually becomes better because now you can sustain your sexual orgasm, you know, a longer period of time or you can modify that and come multiple times. Okay. You, can, you can even have a sexual orgasm um, at the optimal level that lasts you more than an hour. It could be six hours hmm. by being able to tap into that energy. Definitely need your galactic juice for the six-hour one. Definitely. Right. And, and I know that every time I come on your show, or it just, yeah, especially with your show, um, even by myself alone, if I get to... Um, What's the word? Uh, jacked up or hyped up? I, I know it'll distort the <laughs> the um, the Wi-Fi. Okay. Yes. So I, I'm trying to maintain my <laughs> calmness so that it won't interfere. They you can't. notice every time I, I start getting like fired up, the, the, the yeah. distortion. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah. Instantly. Instantly. Yeah. So we have to watch. Instantly. We have so. we have to watch that. Nice and calm. Nice and calm. Yeah, nice, nice and calm, and I already burned up so many of my cell phone. You know, every month I have to get a new phone, and I don't want to burn up my Mac computer. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Not good. Well, Nikki, thanks so no. much. Thanks so much for You're joining welcome. us. Joining us today, and uh, we'll continue this discussion next week. Uh, the first show for me next week is the repurposing show, which is Sunday for you folks, and uh, rather late Sunday. And I'm trying to actually um, shift that time so that it's a bit bit earlier for the people on the east coast of the United States. We'll see how I go with that. But um, look forward to everyone's company next week. Um, Nikki, do you want to give the website for your Tinano technology? Sure. My website is www. T nano.net you'll find a lot of information of what I do and um, the ancestral karmic healing will still be continued providing for everyone it is giving us time slot okay but you're not going to have one-on-one uh, -on -one interaction that's because what I found out is that whenever I set an, a one specific date you'll get more um, attacks or influence by outside forces so I like to just kind of give it a week of where I do the work so it's, it's just a lot less hassle um, in so many aspects. So I just want people to understand that. And I wanted to thank my uh, listeners and now supporters out there who send a lot of um, love and frequency. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I may have all these energies and gifts, but I'm still human. So I appreciate your, your love and support. Yeah, as as do I. So uh, we'll see you all again next time. Um, it'll be next Tuesday for the United States for the next Galactic Historian show. And I wish everybody a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>